logarithm means exponent. So every time you see the word logarithm, in your head you're going to say to yourself exponent. For example, this statement says y is the exponent on base b that gives us the value of x. And notice this b is written as subscript. It's below the line on your paper. Similar to in H2O, the chemical formula for water, that 2 is also written below the line. All right, so this statement here, y is the exponent on base b that gives us the value of x. So y is the exponent on base b that gives us the value of x. When we take a look at some examples here, the first one, you're going to say this to yourself in your head, the exponent we put on base 4 to get a value of 16 is what? So the exponent on base 4 that gives us 16 is 2. So that's the solution. The second one, we're going to say the exponent on base 5 that gives us 125 is, and again in the beginning if you need to write this out, the exponent on base 5 that gives us 125, well, we know 5 cubed is 125. That's the value of the logarithm. All right, pause the video and you try the last one. Exponent we put on 2 that gives us 32 is 5. And if you're not sure, grab your calculator and you're going to go 2 to the power of what gives us that value of 32. If we see logarithms written without a base down here, these are what we call a common logarithm. And we understand that the base has a value of 10. So when we go to evaluate this logarithm, we continue the same process. The exponent on base 10 that gives us a value of 100 is what? So you're basically saying, what is the exponent that we put on 10 that gives us 100? Well, we know that's going to be a value of 2. In the second one, what is the exponent we put on base 10 that gives us a value of 10? Well, we know 10 to the power of 1 is 10. And again, if you need to write this out in the beginning, uh, feel free here. Now, the next one, the exponent we put on 10 that gives us a value of 1 tenth. So the exponent we put on 10 that gives us a value of 1 tenth, we know that's going to be a negative 1. And then the final one, the exponent we put on 10 that gives us the value of 1, anything to the power of 1 we know has an exponent of 0. All four of those are examples of common logarithms. We also have natural logarithms where the base is e. Remember that's Euler's constant, that number of 2.718, etc. Another way of writing log base e is to write ln. Now we pronounce this lawn, so just like the grass outside, it is the lawn of x. Every time you see lawn, you need to know that's log base e. So if we're trying to evaluate this one, we're going to say what is the exponent on base e that gives us the value of e squared? So again, what is the exponent on base e that gives us the value of e squared? Well, in order for these two sides to be equal, this has to be a 2. In the next one, we're going to say again, what is the exponent on base e that gives us a value of e to the power of 5? What is the exponent on base e that gives us a value of e to the power of 5? You're right, it's going to be 5. The third one, what is the exponent on base e that gives us a value of e to the power of negative 3? So the exponent on base e that gives us e to the power of negative 3 is going to be that negative 3. And the last one, we're going to say, what is the exponent we need to put on base e to get e to the power of the square root of 2? And you can see that it is going to be the square root of 2. We have to be able to take a logarithmic equation and convert it into an exponential equation. So if we see something like this, we're going to read this, x is the exponent on base b that gives us the value of n. X is the exponent. Remember, logarithm means exponent. That's your key point. So X is the exponent on base B that gives us the value of N. 
All right, so we're given several logarithmic equations here. We're going to convert those into exponential equations. So we're going to read this properly in our head. We're going to say y is the exponent on base 2 that gives us the value of x. So y is the exponent on base 2 that gives us the value of x. Let's try the next one. So in the second one, 4 is the exponent. 4 is the exponent on base 7 that gives us the value of x. You're going to say this so many times to yourself that it's going to just become habitual and you won't need to look at formulas and go back and forth. It gets all clunky. We're just going to smoothly get the process down. All right, so this now doesn't have a base. We recognize this is a common logarithm, which means the base is 10. So y is the exponent on base 10 that gives us the value of x. y is the exponent on base 10 that gives us the value of x. Now this one here, we know that ln is log base e. So in the beginning, some people, just to help themselves out, like to actually rewrite this as log base e. And then you can say 2 is the exponent on base e that gives us the value of x. 2 is the exponent on base e that gives us the value of x. I want you to get in on the fun here. So pause me and you try to do the last one and we'll see what you came up with. B is the exponent on base x. B is the exponent on base x that gives us the value of a. Did you get it? Good job. Now we're given a series of exponential equations and we're going to convert those into logarithmic equations. So by re reversing the process we previously did, because logarithm means exponent, that's your important piece. That's where we want to start. So 3 is the exponent. So 3 is the exponent on base 4 that gives us the value of 64. 3 is the exponent on base 4 that gives us the value of 64. And again, you got to watch this. This 4 should be underneath your line of loose leaf. This needs to be written as subscript. We're not multiplying those. Now, the order doesn't matter. Some people also like to go 3 is the exponent on base 4 that gives us the value of 64. You're going to see it both ways. They're both equivalent. OK, here we go again. So y is the exponent on base 1 half that gives us the value of 1 eighth. Now remember these brackets tell you that that exponent gets applied to both the numerator and the denominator. I'm going to keep my fractions in brackets for the same reasons. So y is the exponent on base 1 half that gives us the value of 1 eighth. And ideally, this whole piece wants to be on your loose leaf line. The 1 half is going to be a little bit below. Okay, negative 3 is the exponent on base 2. Negative 3 is the exponent on base 2 that gives us the value of 1 eighth. Y is the exponent on base e that gives us the value of x. Now we're not going to leave this as log base e. We can write it like that to help us get organized, but we know log base e we refer to as ln. So we're gonna write y is the ln of x. That's the final form we would leave it in. And then the last one, y is the exponent on base 10 that gives us the value of 1000. And again, we recognize base 10 is a common logarithm, well, we don't need to write that. So I'm just going to rewrite this log 1000. That's the final form we would represent that in. By now, you're probably wondering how logarithms came to be and why we need to know this today. We're going to get to that second piece in the next lesson. But this is John Napier. He was a Scottish mathematician born in the mid 1500s who is credited with the discovery of logarithms. He teamed up with an English mathematician, Henry Briggs, at some point, and they collaborated together. But originally, it was a way to quickly multiply or perform calculations of large numbers without the use of any kind of technology, remember, because there wasn't any back then. He's also the guy that popularized the use of the decimal point and is said to have always gone out in public with his pet spider and his pet rooster.
So here's just a small preview as to why this would have been really exciting. We're going to pretend we have no calculators. Even if you do have one, you're going to see how fast this is. So if we are going to convert these into exponents, so what is the exponent we can put on 2 that gives us a value of 16? Well, we know 2 to the power of 4 is 16. What is the exponent we can put on 2 that gives us a value of 2? Well, we know that's a 1. So if we add these together, 4 plus 1 is 5. That first equation has a value of 5. My second equation, what is the exponent we can put on 2 that gives us a value of 64? Well, we know 2 to the power of 6 is 64. And then what is the exponent we can put on 2 that gives us the value of 8? We know 2 cubed is 8. 6 divided by 3 is 2. And now if we make a comparison, we can see that the value of a is greater.